Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, I know I'm at odds with most of my colleagues on this station and our network guests on this next item, but I really feel I can't bite my tongue any longer. You see, I think the president of the Ukraine is not all that he's portrayed as by the Western media. I mean, if you believe the spin, he's the second coming of Winston Churchill and he'll be remembered as the great hero saving his people from the evil Russians. I'm the first to admit that Putin isn't a good guy either. But what the West glosses over is the terrible things that have happened to the primarily ethnic Russian people in parts of the Ukraine under Zelensky's rule. These people comprise the largest Russian community outside of Russia. And they make up about 17% of the Ukrainian population. And they live in primarily Russian regions and have effectively been in a civil war with the Ukrainian government since 2015. This was just after they were promised a vote on independence in 2014. That vote has never taken place. Zelensky promised to end the civil war. He clearly hasn't done so. Instead, he's facilitated the goading of the Russians by endorsing the right sector, whose leader publicly claimed he fed the bones of Russian children to his pet wolf. Now, apparently that was a joke, but it must have been lost on the Russians and particularly those who felt they'd been mistreated by Ukrainian troops. Here's how Time magazine described one of them, the neo-Nazi Azov movement, just last year. Commentator Glenn Greenwald sums it up nicely with this tweet. No rational person thinks Ukrainian neo-Nazi militias justify this war, but it's dangerous madness to scoff at the impact of arming them as the West is doing. In the words of President Zelensky, they are what they are. Have, have you clear something up for us? Uh, and this is these reports about the Azov Battalion that is said to be Nazi-affiliated organization operating as a militia in your country, uh, said to be committing their own atrocities. What should Americans know about that unit, about those re reports? So Azov was one of those many battalions. They are what they are. I also want to point out that Zelensky sought to join NATO against another Ukrainian agreement that was set to maintain neutrality between Russia and Europe. And even as Russian troops were amassing along the border, the foolish US Vice President Kamala Harris publicly supported Zelensky's bid to join NATO. So I will say what I know we all say, and I will say over and over again. The United States stands firmly with the Ukrainian people in defense of the NATO alliance. You don't think that was about provoking Russia? Well, I do. In any event, like most marketers, Zelensky knows that image is everything. That's why he's always pictured wearing his army green T-shirt. You see, it portrays him as a man of action and part of the front line. Well, that myth was debunked early in the campaign when his staged pickups in battle regalia were exposed as totally contrived. Since then, it's been the T-shirt of disrespect, which he's paraded in every single parliament around the world, just about, begging for more money and arms as one of the most corrupt countries in Europe. And he even wore it on his Vogue magazine photo shoot this week. It was as contrived as everything else, as far as I'm concerned, about... And it was just like what we've seen being presented in this war. The propaganda coming out of the presidential office rivals only that coming out of the Kremlin. It's just that one side's lies are being dutifully regurgitated across the Western world to sustain a proxy war. It's a battle between the East and the West. Few are seeking to defuse this conflict. And instead, I think many of them are much more intent on escalating it and potentially creating World War III. To my mind, and I've said this right from the start, the simple answer to this conflict is to allow the Minsk Agreement, which allows the predominantly Russian areas to vote on their independence. Zelensky is opposed to that proposal, and instead he's banned the Russian language in the public service, he's banned a dozen opposition parties, 
and he's shut down non-state-run media. He's also busy entertaining attention-seeking politicians from all over the world, including our own Prime Minister and Nancy Pelosi, of course, and his wife, well, she's busy visiting the White House while posing for Vogue. Something about all of this doesn't add up. There's an agenda at work in the Ukraine that is much greater than staving off the Russian invaders. We are wise to take everything we're told about this conflict with a huge dose of salt.